continues here, James. So let's have a quick look at our draft. We're going to kick it off straight away with a ban on the Grux coming out of Side of Oxygen. Just removing that hero as well, it means we might be seeing slightly different junglers here. I mean, yeah. um, probably going to see a Sevrog or a Quang in the jungle. We have seen a couple of Chimeras starting to sneak in um, in the cup in since the recent patch, but I really doubt uh, these teams have really sort of had enough time to sort of consider a Chimera to be worth it or not uh, in the current meta, especially without Phase being available. I think it's the power of Phase plus Chimera that you see Chimera quite a bit. And yep, I would. As again, the Morgesh band as well off the bat as well. I would love to see that Morgesh just charging into the top priority hero. We've seen how just strong she is at setting up kills maybe not uh, in 1v1 she can get kills but in team fights when she shows up and is able to spam her mark before the team fight really starts to break down she just sets up kills quite easily the decker first pick here for team oxygen and you know what if, if i'm team oxygen and it's a game three i'm like we gotta get marty on decker they do get him on decker however look at look at the side of finesse they get the double carry bam bam yes one. bam Straight away, it's been open two picks, and they take it. And we saw the power of it in the first game. Yes, they didn't win with it, but they had such a huge lead for a vast majority of the game. And Suki did get a little bit punished in the early stages, but not enough to the point that they had a lead for the vast majority of the match. Yeah. Game number two, they saw that they are able to finish. They are able to overcome that last barrier to take the game. Game number one eluded them. Game number two, I think, this the, the the double carry seems to be their comfort. I don't know. It's hard to say that though because they performed pretty much on the exact same level in game number one. Actually, I think they performed a little bit better in a uh, game number two, rather. And if we so look at them it's next, a, yeah, sure, looking at here, like like the Bellica is now out for. So, uh, uh, I really liking the pick. Um, yeah, it works incredibly well against carries. Just the knock up can be quite a big pain. The burst combo as well. Um, with Quang means that they can try and remove the, the, the carries incredibly easy, easily, even through the heals. Yeah. But correct me if I'm wrong, they did not have Bellica in game number one. Team Oxygen did not have Bellica in I game number one. I don't believe they did. I, I, if I'm correct, they had they had, yeah. uh, they had Fang and yeah. I can't remember who else did they have. Morgash. Yeah, yeah, Morgash. Morgash. Yeah. Arsenic. Yeah, that's what it was. So I think Bellica was something that was even Team Oxygen won that game, but I think Bellica is such a great tool. You've talked about it many times, just reiterating at dealing with this double carry composition because these guys are are for most of the well, that's not the first fifteen to twenty minutes of the match. A majority of their damage comes from their abilities, not from their auto attacks. So that Void Drone is going to be instrumental at taking the winds out of the sails, so to say out of the two carries. Next picks up going to be a Narbash and a Howitzer. So that's going to be a proficiency Howitzer. And of course, it's going to be Lucere over on the Narbash. So Richter, while he is a big playmaker, he's very much so a all or nothing. Narbash is a little bit more well-rounded. Well and those Crash Bang Booms are going to do a, hopefully a decent job at zoning out Kwong initiation. It all boils down to the positioning that Lucere is going to be in once these fights start to happen. And if we move on to the next couple of picks, we do see Oxygen rounding off that composition. We see Ram yet again going for the Feng Mao. He's been playing it every single game. He's been playing it to a reasonable degree of success. We haven't seen the sort of plays we've seen in previous patches where Ram has managed to get a couple of kills, 2v1 or something with Feng, but he's been still doing incredible, a lot of work on the pick. He's been in position. He's been able to farm well, but... Again, will they be able to get onto this double carry line? This is kind of the issue. Their, their composition is set up as to whether or not they can kill one of these two carries in the early stages of the game if they can try and remove it. And Sevrog is the perfect comp, uh, character in the jungle for Finesse to sort of be that yep. frontliner for those carries. I completely agree. The drafts for Team Oxygen here, I like their draft better than they had in game number one, Gems. I think... You have Containment Fence plus Fury into Judgment of the Heavens. Feng Mao goes in. Bellica with Seismic Assault. They have a lot of backline pickoff potential onto both Suki and Strafe. As well as Narbash, sure. 
But those are the big targets you want to take out of the equation. I think Team Oxygen, with this draft, has equipped themselves with the tools that they need to mitigate the strengths coming out of this sort of composition that Team Finesse is once again putting on the board. I believe this is the four out of five games we have seen them, casted them, and broadcasted this weekend. It was a very similar composition. On the other side, though, Team Finesse, they don't have that Richter. They have a, a little bit more well-rounded on the Narbash and their mid laner. I believe they had, who was their mid laner in game number one? Regardless, the strategy is going to remain the same. Suki in that off lane. And I also want to see if Team Oxygen can capitalize. On, no one has seemed to do this quite yet. Capitalize on the weaknesses of Revenant off lane. Are we going to see a little bit more rotation coming out of meds on that Quang, landing a tether and securing kills? And we are off with our first, yes, well, our, our final ma match of the day, <laughs> of the semifinals, I should say. Oh, the semifinals? What are you talking about? This is not the final the match. We've still got another best of three lined up in the finals. <laughs> and whoever wins this will be against the Reborn. So let's start straight off the bat and look at these team lineups. And on the side of Oxygen, we have Imsco on Murdoch, Marty on the Decker, Meds on that Quang, Ram Rudels on the Feng Mao, and Arsenic on that Bellica. And over on the other side, Team Finesse, Lucere is going to be picking up the Narbash there. Strafe on Twin Blast. Suki on Revenant, Chillfill again, picking up the reins of Severog and Howitzer being played by the mid laner of Proficiency. I had a little bit of a lapse here on my replay. Going to adjust that here for a bit here. But judging by the uh, uh, draft, I'd imagine that we're just going to see some dummy wards going down and then just falling to their respective lanes. Yeah, that's exactly what we're seeing right now. Neither team really going for anything. The first couple of cu couple of sages. Interesting to note is Chillfield's starting item. He's actually elected instead of going for the sage siphon that you see a lot of um, non uh, corruption. I mean, sage siphon or the other siphon are really good. He's elected to go for the oasis to get the health regen. Um, it will slow his clear down a little bit because he yep. won't have as much damage or attack speed as the other ones, but it will keep him fairly healthy throughout the entirety of it. Emsco again, picking up Murdoch. A hero who has changed we haven't seen very much of ever since he received those scaling decreases on his long, uh, long arm of the law. That ability used to do all of the damages. It still serves the same purpose. And he was able to get some decent value out of it last game. No crazy split bush like Murdoch split bush shenanigans, just Pretty much the same style you, you see coming out uh, from Isco, as you would imagine. Just on top of it, he can get some pickoffs from anywhere across the field. I want to keep an eye on Chillfill and his rotations. He already picked up the green, and he's using the green to farm as opposed to gank. You can already see Suki's put in a, a pretty awkward position here. As uh, a Revenant in the off lane, be, walking up that far into the lane can often spell pretty much your death if there's yeah. one stun coming up from Decker is enough to sort of combo that with with the Murdoch, potentially the Buckshot or the increased range shot. I think it's an increased range shot now, isn't it? He has a longer range now in his auto attacks and he gets a little bit of a buff. As of right now, no rotation from meds. Now he's starting to. Looking around that corner. There are no wards currently for Suki. He's just sort of peeking his head around that corner. Look, he's he's almost anticipating the rotate for Medge, like just having his head around the corner, waiting for that, recognizing Su Suki, recognizing he doesn't want to be pushing that far forward, especially around the three minute mark with the first river buffs. Chillfill has a purple over in mid lane. Unfortunately, the subjugate is not going to land over onto Arsenic, and Arsenic's going to be able to be able to get out of a situation that could have been the death of him. Yeah, it, it's it's looking like the same setup we've been seeing the first couple of games. Uh, uh, the first couple of minutes, neither team really wants to risk anything. Suki is going to be sitting in this weak side of the jungle, just trying to get as much farm as he can, because you could see Oxygen forcing the scenario where the offlaner can't farm, and they've been doing it a lot better throughout the tournament than a lot of teams, because they always consistently have a minion advantage against uh, the teams they play against uh, through sheer being able to deny minions and the ability to have uh, Ram Riddles farm incredibly effectively in his offlane. 
Lucerne Strafe are just kind of doing a little bit of a, uh, a dance, a little bit of a shimmy on the other side of the map. No active pushes. Their lane is pushed out while you see Oxygen taking a different style. And I like that they're freezing the lane as opposed to pushing it down. Um, I think it's just the right call. It forces Suki into a situation he doesn't want to be in here. Now, the moment he sees meds on the map, you'll probably see Suki get a little bit more aggressive. But Decker has much more kill potential with the stasis bomb, the damage that it does respective to other early game support abilities, slow bubble isolating, and of course Murdoch's damage is actually, his his auto attack damage uh, early on it chunks down pretty friggin' hard. It actually is pretty close to Revenant's auto attack damage uh, early on. So Suki already, they're indirectly restricting him from farm, where in the other games, he really hasn't been that restricted. He's been farming at a moderate rate. And as of the situation, he only has 9 CS at 5 minutes compared to the 15 of Ramrills. Again, that's exactly what I was talking about. He's already gained an advantage right off the bat, 5 minutes in. Again, neither team really sort of fighting over the river buff. They're kind of just giving one to each other. Arstic does grab one. It looks like he might get quite a hit with Chill Phil being subjugated. Is there a seismic assault to potentially peel himself out of there? It actually doesn't land on anyone. And Arsenic gets hit by the R2000. Chill Phil. Uh, Meds rotates over. Meds was actually looming, looking for a kill on Suki, But he fell back. The tether on a Chill Phil is going to tell him to give up that kill. And other side of the field, we do see Suki's tier 1 tower has fallen at the 5 minute mark. And Meds rotating around. Weak side of the jungle. Suki's in a lot of trouble here if that tether lands. The stasis bomb misses, but the tether does. Fury of the Heavens. They're going to go for the dive on the tower. So if he's trying to juke, he's trying to drive. He's trying to keep himself alive. Imsko misses the auto. That one missed auto is going to be Suki getting away. They tried to get him. The Punisher not living up to his name. It, him being able to survive is pretty big. It's In the previous match, I believe, he, uh, where he played Revenant in the offlane, uh, that gank was actually successful. He ended up did, did fall down, uh, but it was a... Uh, I think it was a one, one trade, but with Chillfield grabbing a kill on the Sevrog afterwards in, in the first couple of minutes. So him not dying is actually pretty good because there was no follow-up uh, kill being capable of happening. And it allows him to just get back and farm and not give any sort of advantage over to Imsko. Imsko's by himself up against Revenant. He's got to be careful. If Suki has creep or just finds himself in a situation to Reckoning and get a solo kill. Kill potential definitely is favored towards Suki. But Marty's rotating over very quickly. Seven minutes in. Team's positioning themselves up for the gold buff. Chill Phil's going to pick himself off a blue buff. Well, Marty looks like that's going to be a black buff. Saving that for more higher priority hero. Looks like it's going to be Arsenic on Velika picking it up. Giving some decent kill potential. Arsenic, a couple auto attacks as well as a combo from Velika is enough for kill potential and proficiency. Especially because he's already at about 25% mana. So... No mana, plus a full combo and the extra damage from Black Buff could easily be a pickup on proficiency. He you sees the flank coming in, and he's going to get it. He's, for now, going to be okay. He, proficiency recognizes that. I was like, yeah. you know, he has that Black Buff. He can't really risk a fight at all. He's also low on mana. So that Belica's ultimate is going to do a substantial more damage as, as it stacks up on proficiency for low mana pool. And again, there is that tower going down here for the side of Finesse. They do trade off that tier 1, finally knocking it down. For the 10 minute mark, it means they're going to be able to rotate onto this Raptor side should they choose to and prepare for the 10 minute Raptors. Um, we have been seeing it, we saw it in the previous game, they took they took it as it spawned. Whether or not that will happen this game is going to be up to sort of if they can get a pick, I suspect, is what we're going to be aiming for on the side of Finesse. And if they can get a kill early and then take Raptors, that is going to set Suki up and it's going to set up Strafe the two carries to actually get a lead they need. Because at the moment, looking at Suki, he's only at nine points. He's incredibly wow. far behind. Yeah. Marty on, on a support is at 11. Um, wow. Because of how much he's actually been able to just to get it. And even Feng Mao on Ran Riddles is at 12 because of the farm difference. Double the farm with Suki right now. If Team Finesse are able to get control of the Raptors, which they're in a decent situation to do so just because they are uh, over on the Dawn side. Um, or rather, I'm sorry, Suki on the dive side is close to the Raptors. I definitely would say let's give those Raptors over to Suki, try to catch him up on farm. Strafe doing a, a very good job keeping up with him, Sko Weaven. Uh, actually, a little bit of a head, but nothing that's really negligible at this point. Just hit 14 card points, and I'm sure Imsko is just on the cusp of hitting that as well. 
Picks up the purple buff onto him, not very threatening. Blue buff for proficiency here at the nine minute river buffs. Maybe you give him a speed boost to knock out Arsenic from his own tower, but Chillfill's not really in the area to have any follow up. So no kill potential across the field at this point in time. 45 seconds Raptor will spawn. He's going Marty in position, and the vision battle has begun. It's going to be who can clear out the majority of these wards. Try to get out. You can see Marty being incredibly aggressive here, um, trying to just zone out side of uh, Finesse. But again, neither team fully committing on an engage, neither team taking the risks, because we've seen the previous two games, like they've both gone, gone down to the wire. Both teams are actually at 60 points, and then they're forced to make a risk. Right. It's one of those things where they, they're they hedging their bets on that one fight. Whereas if you take risks early, you can hedge it on a couple of fights. But if you lose a couple, you, you're most likely going to get snowed ball against you as well. But it's a, it's a bit of a risk reward scenario, depending on what teams have been wanting to do. I feel that Team Finesse is the one who's a little bit under pressure to get these Raptors. And they're the ones who are now currently engaging. Saying, Suki, sorry, man. We know you're hungry, but they're going to have to deal with it a little bit. Long arm of the law, trying to be used, if not to steal the Raptor, maybe potentially to get someone low enough for a kill potential. Meds landed the tether under Lucer, but did not decide not to engage even with the green buff, as the Raptor is pretty much cleaned up at this point. And Strafe and Suki, carry duo, looking for a dive underneath the tower, but the quenching scales is going to keep Marty alive. The obliterate got him low enough, but we might see a push out of this tower, as a lot of resources, the entire team of Team Finesse is on the left side of the map, while Ram Riddles just continues to split push, split push, split push and create a extraordinary large amount of space for the rest of this team. It's, again, three Raptors on the side of Finesse. It's going to get straight up to 18 points. Couple point lead now already on the board for himself, uh, purely just for the Raptors, and he's doing pretty okay and fine. Pretty equal with Imsco. That Meds is. gets caught out over at the uh, Raptor camp. Just a, a, a landmine into a thunk into Strafe. Pop, pop, popping. And another kill, another abuse, uh, another infusion of card experience. Going over the carry, one of the carry players of... I'm, I'm just going to call Twin Blast the carry, because he's within a safe lane, damn it. And now a mid lane siege underway. This looks like another free mid lane uh, tower over the side of Finesse. This is sort of what they've been hoping for. They they managed to grab the Raptors, they managed to get a single pick and a tower. They've given themselves a nice little early game advantage here, 12 minutes into the game. A couple of points already ahead on straight is at 20 points, and is only at 16. Uh, they're starting to slowly build up the advantage they had. It's incredibly similar to the first game we saw, where we saw um, Strafe winning a lot and getting a lot of kills extra and actually being able to sort of gain the lead throughout team fights, whereas in this case they're doing it through sheer rotations. Ramados continues to push that wave all the way into that tier 2 tower, rotating Strafe over, feeding him that farm but making sure that he's not going to be contributing anything to any fights anytime soon. Really, no primary objectives on the field for either one of these teams to contend over. I think it's just going to be a, ma uh, a matter of stay in your lanes, look for pickoffs, and try to catch out someone around the Raptor camp timing. Orb Primes we've seen taken pretty early, as early as 15 minutes. We saw that uh, in previous games this weekend. And I wouldn't be surprised maybe to try to throw one of the other teams off, especially if this game starts to break down into a very conservative farm-oriented game, that a team could really catch one of their opponents off guard by not necessarily committing to the Orb Prime, but maybe Fanny over there, baiting out a team fight, something along those lines. We'll see if that's one team is, is going to be confident enough to do, or if these guys with the Game 3, if, if they really don't want to risk that, as both of these guys are trying to fight to get themselves into the Finals. Yeah, both these teams have a lot on the line right now. Um, it is game three, as we've been talking about this uh, over and over again. Neither of them can really want to make a big play where they could potentially lose the game off of it. Even if it might win them the game, they, they don't want to risk it. Fang now looking for a kill over on Strafe. Lucer was there to back up his buddy. Arsenic now rotating as well, but they're getting the hell out of that speed boost. I love Narbash, man. He's such a he's such a cool dude. I feel like out of all the heroes in Paragon, Chims, which one would you want to have a beer with the most? Which one I would want to have a beer with? Hmm. It's a tricky one. We'll discuss right after if we see Ram Riddles actually survive. Narbash! Is, is, is it really Narbash? It is for me. Strafe gets a kill. Just got caught out. Meds might be able to get a reprisal. Support for, 
Support for an offlaner. And the carry picking up the kill. Team Finesse is, gonna be okie dokie with that trade. Is it really Noash? Do you want to sit there while he's just hitting the drums while you're trying to have a peaceful drink? I mean, he doesn't always have the drums with him, only when he's in battle. Mm, I think Sevrog seems like a cool dude. He's like the guy you just sit there, he's cold and silent. And you can just sit and have a drink and then uh, he'll, he'll make some sort of remark you wouldn't expect. Out of, out of the blue. He'll say, what do the five fingers say to the face and then soul siphon the bar bartender? <laughs> Marty Rivia, level five. Has had level five for quite some time. Raptor's going to be spawning here in about 15, 30 seconds. No big containment fences coming out yet, but we're still very early into this game. We'll see what uh, if they're going to play off of that containment fence or if they're just going to continue to play passive, conservative, and just try to farm, farm, farm. I was thinking, Iggy's not one you want to be having a drink with because you wouldn't want to get... Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Well, you don't want to have a drink with him because you don't well, want Scorch, to Scorch get the wrong one. Molotov <laughs> that you've been using. <laughs> Scorch is the um, the one who actually breathes the fire, I believe. We have all this talk about who we're going to have a drink with. All the meanwhile is Arsenic. It's taking out in the mid lane here, guys. Game three banter. What can you do? Right at the Raptors. Good timing to take out a mid laner, not having to worry about the drone, not having to worry about the seismic assault. And confidently swinging over to the Raptors. going to be able to clean this up. Suki farming all the meanwhile. Let's take a look. How is Suki done on catching back off of his farm? He's at 20. Let's go at 23. So he's still behind the carry, and actually even further behind the offlaner, but at least he's starting to get some semblance of farm here. Again, the lead is slowly growing right off the board, and Strafe's sitting now at 29 points, couple of completed items. He's going to recall, grab that blink shot of his now, so he has an, an escape he can use should he need to, which is actually pretty big, uh, especially because you don't want to be in in situation where a Quintel is going to land on you, or see Ram Riddles jump straight onto you as well. I mean, there's a lot of different possibilities where that blink is going to come in handy, and he's already managed to get it few minutes into the game. Emsko sitting at 97 CS. Ram Riddles at 117. The dude knows how to farm. The dude yeah, he's, loves hit and creep. He's ahead of uh, on, on points of Emsko, and three levels ahead as well, so he's level 10. Highest level in the game right now, 26 points. However, it hasn't really had much of an impact in fights at the moment. And we're at the stage. We hear a reckoning go down. I think it's more so just defensive. You see three team members of Oxygen were surrounding Suki. But that ultimate has so much value at getting yourself out of situations where you're dead to rights. He's done it time and time again, and he's actually... So he's pretty much reserved reckoning for those exact situations, especially during the laning phase, which we now have a laning phase approaching 20 minutes with intermittent breaks of uh, a pickoff here and there right around the timing of the Raptors. But I really like that. I think that's just very, very smart play when it comes down to the breaking of a team fights, knowing that you're not the only carry means you don't have to save like the big money reckoning onto the opponent's carry meds. His subject is not going to land onto him as his teammate is in tow. Pressuring this tier 2 tower, but yeah, we're at this stage of the game where teams are not quite yet confident enough to push tier 2 towers, but all the tier 1 towers have fallen. And there's generally a lull around this time, just waiting for them to get some levels, get some cards. And once we hit a certain point here in a couple minutes, we we'll start seeing a little bit more concerted pushes, invasions into the jungle, looking for tier 2 towers and deny their opponents those jump pads. Yeah, they've already managed to do it. Um, Oxygen have actually taken a lot of the jungle here from the side of Finesse. They've got war a, cup a ward or awards set up in in the entrance however as you mentioned it is the lull um it's going to be mainly fought around things like the raptor pit uh, so the next couple of fights depending on the river buffs as well around the timings of the raptor um and who has things like the vision control is what's going to be important for either this team to sort of take a significant lead because right now even though strafe's actually ahead of 32 points has got that hemorrhage if he gets caught out by the oxygen lineup, um, that completely negates all the sort of the first twenty minutes of the game that they were trying to build. See what they're able to do here. Nineteen minutes, buffs to spawn. Suki putting himself preemptively into a position to pick up the buff on the left side of the field of Chill Field zoning. It's gonna be a red buff. That actually on Revenant's pretty good. Just saying. 
That obliterate, you think it does a lot of damage now, wait until you get a, a uh, red buff over on the Suki. But Chill Phil, gonna be the uh, greedy guy that he always is and picked it up for himself. And it was a blue on the other side of the map that proficiency was able to pick up here. And just still a lot of just, uh, this is one of the longer phases, longer lane phases that we've seen. Game number one had a pretty long one as well, but it was around this time that we really started to see teams rotate a little bit more, have timings. And thus far, it's just team, these guys are perfectly content. Even though they have, uh, even though Team Fes Finesse has this double carry composition that peaks between the 15 and 25 minute mark, they still have a double carry composition that lends their late game to be very, very strong. Yeah, the late game is always going to be a real big trouble for the side of Oxygen. They're going to have to really get their sort of coordination down and make sure to take out, ideally, st sorry, ideally strafe. Purely because um, Suki can just pop his ultimate, go into the nether realm, I believe it's called, um, and just sit there and, not, and be safe. Like, that's kind of the issue. If you try to put all of your eggs in one basket and go for Suki, you can end up surviving and you end up yeah. using a lot of resources you wouldn't necessarily have wanted to use. Raptors spawn in here in just a moment. Teams just relegated to their respective positions. Suki's still static and left. Ramadol's still static and right. Geophil picking up his green buff. But over here on Team Oxygen's side of the jungle, we see a three-man rotation. Meds get stunked up. Speed boost used. We heard the landmine being queued up for proficiency, but he wasn't close enough to be able to get that off. Now the rotation here is coming from Team Oxygen. It's not a single containment fence has been used this game. And all of a sudden, now the teams have grouped up. Feng now in a little bit of trouble in an awkward position. The Colossal Blow. There's the containment fence. Actually, some, some miscommunication of abilities there coming out from Team Finesse. They actually used the Colossal Blow and knocked Fang Mao out of the Crash Bang Boom, but they still were able to pick up the kill. Fang Mao being taken off the map, that nuisance who has been split pushing constantly, the thorn in the side of Team Finesse. Off the field, while Narbash, he did his job, he tanked damage, he went down, sure, but he picked up a much higher priority kill for his death, and the Raptors more than likely are going to be a target here. Proficiency has a purple, though. I don't think Marty knows about it. Arsenic isn't knowing about it as well. Chill Phil is going to fall back. They don't even go for the Raptors, it looks like. Strafe already immediately rotating the right lane and just picking up that very valuable farm. And Suki just caught the end of it. Got a solo kill onto Imsko. Didn't even need the ultimate. Didn't even need that reckoning. Imsko was out by himself. And if you're by yourself and all of a sudden you see Revenant show up, you know you're in for a bad time. So Team Finesse take a really good engagement here. And looks like these teams are finally starting to go at each other's throats. Well, the last 22 minutes have just been farm, farm, farm. Yeah, that happened, and we can already see Finesse here actually grabbing the Raptors now right off of, off of those couple of kills. Yes, you can see actually they're giving it to Suki because Strafe isn't there, which means that Suki now is actually at 31 points, which is there you go. actually what he needs to be at. He's still a little bit far behind, but it's a lot of points actually towards him right now. Gives him a little, I think it gives him another completed item, I believe, if I double check. Yeah, should have. He should definitely have over one or two completed items now because he's sitting on about eight points there, and that is actually going to be pretty big. It does grab that stasis gem, so he has another. There it is. Another way to survive just a little bit longer uh, without having to force the use of his ultimate. How many stasis gems did we see in game two? Like, was, I think I, there were four or five total. And there was one fight. All I could hear was the stasis gem yeah. sound. <laughs> was I was like, like and station, my play by play was like, and station stream, but it was station stream, there's the station stream. Like, that was, that was the play by play, but, I mean, it's, it's a new card, it's a really, as you can tell, powerful card that negates and ultimately can save a teammate when backed up by any form of support. And, uh, I think it really is really exceptionally great on Revenant, just because it pretty much enables him to 1v1 even better strafe, so very low, but the long arm of the law. You gotta watch out from that laser. Anywhere on the map, Imsko lines it up, lands it. Strafe gets taken out. They're not gonna push down this tier 2 tower. Instead, fall back to the jungle. Maybe try to steal a green buff. Or just repositioning and reposturing for a potential tier 2 tower push in the right lane. The wave is being pushed currency. Lucera's tethered up. Uses the stasis gem. Look at the patience, though. There's the stun. Goodbye, Lucera. Now two down. Big 5v3 power play coming out here from Team Oxygen. With right lane already pushed in, mid lane into rest as well. This could be, at minimum, a mid, la mid lane tier 2 tower. But right lane could be swapped over to very quickly as well. 15 seconds, no twin blast. Team Finesse, they're just going to fall back and they're forfeiting the tower. 
It is the tier 2 doubt. It's a really strong play from Oxygen. They have been on the back foot for a lot of this game. It's exactly what they needed because uh, Imsco is now only have two points behind Australia. Fang Mao ran riddles 39 points, only one point behind Strafe. Um, as an offlaner, he's doing incredibly well. And it looks like they're trying to bait around this prime pit. Yeah. They're getting vision, but they're not committing. As I say that, Imsco. I think, are they, I think they're faking it. Imsco's just shooting. Well, I think he accidentally hit it. <laughs> Imsco! Let me get some potato in chat, please, for you Imsco subs out there. I'm subbed to him, and you should too. But yeah, I think they were just doing uh, trying to gain vision. But Team Finesse knows what's going on. Immediately counter ward. And now they're going to retain the vision. So you can tell the, the, the Raptors are a losing priority here. And Orb Prime is going to be the area where one of these teams gets themselves over to the finals. No doubt about it. Right lane still being pushed in. But Remmels now has gone to the opposite side of the field to the left. Because that is the way of pushing against them. All of Team Finesse is hanging out with this Orb Prime. And now they're, they are the one faking this. I remember the first time we saw this, it just completely took everyone off guard here. But these players know if they don't hear the Orb Prime, actually, the Orb Prime Q. Oh my, that tether could be huge if he decides to go in, but instead, Meds actually just gets absolutely caught out. Big tool of initiation used. Now this, the containment fence used. I think that may have been just a little bit of an act of desperation to try to break down this team fight and prevent Team Finesse continuing to push forward. Ram Riddles shows up to the fight completely by himself. Yeah, not much mana. Colossal blow into the sky. And he gets taken out too. The Bruiser brothers of Kwong and Feng Mao are off the field. More importantly, Feng Mao being off the field means they don't have to worry about their lanes constantly being pushed in. And now they're looking for more Imsko. If he gets thunked, straight to Suki have... Oh, the thunk just barely misses right there. If that landed, that would have been the death of Imsko and potentially an Orb Prime into inhibitor. Now Chill Phil, he has now preemptively put himself into a position to find a kill. Subjugate on a Marty. Doesn't have mana, but it doesn't matter. Strafe come over. Suki gets the, the obliterate. Strafe ends up getting the kill. Staggered deaths are so crippling at this stage of the game, Gems. If, if Decker was able to survive right there, they would have been able to stabilize and contend or prime. But as of right now, that's not going to be the case. And they're just going to have to fall back and resume farming these lanes. Kill after kill has been happening on the side of Oxygen. They, I mean, they've been dying one after the other. And I mean, and that's a little bit greedy, I think, potentially just trying to start the prime. Yes, they've managed to get a number of kills right there. I think they should be fairly content with the lead they've given themselves off of that. Yes, they didn't get the prime, but significant points on kills on the board, uh, eight to four at the moment in kills to death in favor of Finesse. Shave sitting at 44 this points. And this, is again, what, this is what Team Oxygen did previously. They were able to s s sneak this Orb Prime out from underneath the nose of their opponent. Orb Prime down at half HP, and they're retreating. Emsco, actually three people rooted up there. That could have been pretty bad. They're getting out, proficiency. Does he have a blink? Does he have a blink for a landmine? They're looking for it. So if you get on a Fang Mouth, but he's going to be okay. He's going to get away. The Void Drone now on cooldown for upwards of 30 seconds. Don't have to worry about that. Both these teams, man. They, there's so much respect between these two teams. Neither of them committing the Orb Prime. And they're now positioning themselves for Orb Prime as well. It does look like they're positioning around it. Chillfill trying to get a pick here, and he, he isn't able to do it. The blink coming out from proficiency as well. Oh man, this team fight right here. The Crash Bang Boom has done its job. Fang Mao's gonna get taken out. Nope, he's able to live right there. And now Arsenic is isolated. Chillfill swinging the hammer. Does get the kill. And right now this is looking... Very even fight. Colossal Blow Subjugate actually does not hit the Fang Mao, but it has isolated meds, but he's the only one there. A little bit of a split engagement here. Lucier doesn't have much mana. Strafe blinks forward. Misses the auto attack. Meds does get taken out as well, though, so... Scrappy engagement! Ultimately, though, neither one of these teams is going to have enough fuel left in the tank to pick up the Orb Prime. Yeah, it's... Neither of them could take it. The whole fight... The purpose of a lot of these fights are so they can set up a scenario where they can take... Yeah, and it looks like Ram might just be caught up. I don't think Chilfo has any more mana left. Yeah, these engagements are just... So very close. These teams want to make it to the finals. They're so desperate to make it to the finals here. Thank Neither you. of them. And also again, Raptors is having a little up. issues here. There we go. There's my client. It decided to switch monitors, but that's okay. At least it's still, at least it's still uh, up on my monitor here. There we go. All right, we're back. I'm back in there, Jim. We're good. We're good. We're good. Don't worry. Nothing has happened. 
everything okay. is okay. <laughs> like, um, at the moment, neither of the teams have actually convincingly won a fight. So um, it's incredibly difficult for either of them to then take Prime without uh, losing a lot as well. So they get one or two picks, but they're now all really like half health, low health. Yeah. Um, so And it ends up being a scenario where they can't, no one can risk anything more. They kind of just have to go, okay, we lost a couple of kills either side. Neither team can now risk any sort of big play because they know they're too low to actually do anything. It's just this continuing battle of vision around Or Prime that these guys just do. You have one of the, you have Ram Riddles for Team Oxygen and Suki for Team Finesse always going to one lane, descending and battling it back and forth, back and forth, while the rest of their team put wards down and deny vision. And it's just one misstep from any one of these teams could result into catastrophic, could, could snowball into a catastrophic damage, ultimately leading to them getting knocked out here. And Team Reborn, aka <laughs> Ram Riddles, not Team Reborn, but Ram Riddles, damn it, is just abusing that strong ability to clear out these waves, and he's done it so very well. He very rarely gets caught out, and when he does get caught out, he's able to slip away from what looks like just ultimate death. Sets yeah. the wave again, and now left wave is set for Team Finesse. Right wave set for Team Oxygen. Meds set. And he's about to go down. Nope. Strafe does get the kill. Thought he was going to be able to get away. Now Suki coming in from the mid lane. The Make It Rain has been used by Proficiency, but that's okay. He wants to get those R2000 rockets off. R2, or the Make It Rain more so used as a tool to zone and secure them their safety retreating. 45 minutes with no meds, no big initiation. And immediately swinging over to Aura Prime. Team Oxygen know about this, and we know that teams will go in 3v5, 4v5. They're not afraid to go into this engagement, but already preemptively positioning themselves to get catch out the rotation. The three-man seismic assault, the three-man bomb was beautifully done, but unfortunately was not enough to keep Ram Riddles alive on the Fang Mal. They continue to give these pickoffs here, but at the same time, they're still delaying their opponent of Team Finesse of picking up the big objective. Kwong back on the field for 14 seconds. There is a 4v5 potential at the Orb Prime. I mean, it seems like they're just feeding kills at this point in time, but more importantly, they're just trying to delay them from getting this Orb Prime, and they're able to do it. They're falling back, and they can't get it. They have to go to right lane. They have to respect the damage output coming out from Belica and Murdoch, even just the long arm of the law, especially if you look at the health pools. At the moment, everyone was seeing about sub-half health with half the mana pool right now and a long arm of the law. With the Prime hitting you, can just turn that around fairly quickly. Uh, so they, they completely respect it. They, they back out, they get all their health back, they get the points, more importantly. They go back and spend all the remaining points they got from all those couple of kills from those fights. And they're looking probably to yet again do the same thing keep repeating it until oxygen end up having to commit more than they need to right lane set in the favor team finesse left lane set in the favor team finesse mid lane just now set in the favor of team finesse all five members of oxygen are here or prime has committed the double auto the double range carry composition oh man it's already dead just taken out so quickly. And they're going to fall back, stabilize, spend their points. They have map control. And now they're going to look for a big objective here. We've always seen them go for mid, uh, a la solo queue style. Just go down mid and get the inhibitor. Well, I would love to see them go for left, secondarily go for right. We just get a little bit more control, a little bit more pressure on those lateral lanes than you do necessarily in mid. But at the same time, mid has a little bit smaller of a traversal time to get to the core if you take a big team fight. But if you're going to take a big team fight, those seconds that you gain from that really are insignificant at that point. But I'd imagine what we're going to see here, James, is setting the waves for Team Oxygen, a, a continuing battle of trying to manipulate these waves into the favor while all the meanwhile we see scrappy engagements across the map. If, the, if it's up to Team Oxygen, that's what they want. But if it's up to Team Finesse, they're just going to group up, set a wave, push down, try to get inhibitor and try to end this game. Yeah, it's it's looking like they're just going to set up this. They're looking to actually go to the side lane, potentially or potentially gank around into the mid lane and try to flank, flank from the sort of the jungle because they have full vision control. But yep. they don't necessarily need to. They're going to just go down the side here, take the side inhibitor the furthest away from Prime. So if they don't finish or don't get a clean fight off of this, they still have the advantage of this inhibitor probably falling down. The two big things to look for here are chill fill with subjugate. On the other side of the field 
This containment fence coming out from Marty. Widely respected Decker player. One of the most widely respected support players in the world. And if anyone's going to be able to pull off a 3-4-5 man containment fence, it's Marty. It's Rivia. Tier 2 tower push. Coming down the pipeline. Right is set against Team Finesse, but it's going to be quite some time before that wave actually meets that tier two tower. Look at look at this little bush trident now. They're trying to set the trap. Efficiency blinks for him. The subjugate onto two, that's what they needed. But he gets stunned up by the time the Colossal Blow was there. Arstic timed that beautifully, but the tower falls immediately. The power of your prime is too much. Containment fence is down. And oh, Arstic is taken out too. Chufu barely lives. The long arm of the law hit him, but it just barely stayed alive. Three down on the side of Team Oxygen. Crash, bang. Boom, down goes Ram Riddles, too. And ladies and gentlemen, I think that's going to be it. I think Team Finesse coming in here as an unknown team, as just outright the underdog, are going to end this game right here, right now. Mez is the only one alive. Do miracles happen? I don't know. I think I know Mez is good, but he's going to be able to do this. He gets subjugated. He gets focused down, and he goes down. All enemies have fallen. Team Finesse, congratulations. The new kids on the block are gonna swag. They are gonna shimmy them what themselves over to the finals to face Reborn. What a best of three we just had and witnessed. Yeah. <laughs> God, the third game. The finals. Yeah, it does. The third game was actually the shortest one out of all three, ending around 35 minutes. And both of these teams, you could see how well they played. I, I felt like. You could see Oxygen struggling a little bit in the last game, um, potentially maybe slightly demoralized, I think, um, when they started falling a little bit behind. Not too much. I, I'm not. It, they were still holding on. They are still doing incredibly well, but a couple of mistakes here and there, a couple of late recalls, and that was all it took for Finesse yeah. to take the win there with the Prime. Ladies and gentlemen, the stage has been set. The finals of Paragon Competitive League North America, number eight. The finals leading into the qualifiers for the exhibition event going into July. Reborn and Team Finesse. Chill Phil has played for Reborn. Suki has played for Reborn. These guys know each other in and out. They know that they have the playbook memorized. Both teams have each other's playbook memorized. They know each other. These guys have been facing against each other, dating all the way back to triangle formation versus straight out of Agora this time last year. These teams are either going to just stay consistent, and we're going to see a big struggle in the battlefields of Monolith, or what I'm hoping for is some crazy Joker pick where they pick up some pocket strategy and do something crazy. If we're going to see something like that happen, it's going to be in the finals of an event like this. The implications of this leading into the qualifiers is quite a bit, and I think is going to set the stage for that $15,000 tournament come August. We're going to take a small break here, guys. Some of us need to use the restroom, so get a drink of water. The finals between Reborn and Team Finesse are coming up next.